Hi guys. So today I wanted to talk about uh, losing friends because of your chronic fatigue. Um, I just wanted to share my story on, um, you know, how I kind of lost some friends during this. So initially when I was sick, it took me like 10 years to really get get to the point where I had to start telling people I... I hit it a lot with drinking and with caffeine. So, you know, it was like roller coaster. I didn't tell a soul. I didn't tell anyone. Um, so many doctors had told me it was depression that I just stopped telling people anything. I didn't tell boyfriends. I, I didn't tell anybody. They just thought I was like, I just never got enough sleep, I guess. They probably thought that. Um, anyway, so I guess it was a few years ago when I decided to start telling people because I crashed hardcore. I was getting fevers. Um, it was like uncontrollable. I couldn't, it was, it was unbearable. And I had to tell people like it was time. I felt like it was time because I was done hiding it. And, um, it was like more effort to hide it than it was worth. So I started telling people, and I just wanted you to know some of the things people think, so you can be prepared for what might happen when you tell people. A lot of times people, um, some people think that you're lazy. My closest friends, I don't think, ever thought that because they know that I'm, I'm like hardcore. I, once I get my mind on something, I just do it. I'm like, I'm very hardcore like that. So I don't think that they thought I was lazy, but they, um, that is some, like, strangers think that about you. If they just hear, like, the things that you do, you're like, oh, I'm just going to chill at home today. They're like, okay, you're being a lazy bum. You know, like, yesterday I sat and watched TV from, like, three on. I was able to get up for a walk, a short walk, but it was because I, I had done two-mile walks two days in a row, and I guess it just, on the third day, I was just, like, out, um, so, like, that, if you just heard that about me, you'd be like, oh, this, this girl is lazy, but, um, yeah, uh, a lot of the problems that I had when I wasn't really announcing it to people, not that I really announced it to people, but my guy friends, I work in IT, so I have a lot of guy friends, a lot of my guy friends, girlfriends, did not trust me because they thought something was like mysterious about me. Like I was holding some sort of like crush on their boyfriends and uh, they just did not trust me whatsoever. And a lot of that I think has to do with the activities that we would do. I mean, it's not like we would go out and party with like a bunch of people. It was more like um, if we hung out, I would just calm chill on their couch, you know, maybe watch a little TV and then go for a walk, like nothing crazy or like, you know, we'd go and get coffee. A lot, I guess it would be, it would be considered like bonding, like bonding experience between people. Um, but like, you know, for us chronic fatigue people, like that, that's a night out for you, you know, like that, <laughs> that'll be it for like a week. But, um, yeah, so that was, that's a huge problem. That's still a huge problem that I have with my guy friends, girlfriends. They don't trust me and I don't trust them enough to tell them anything. I'm like, don't tell them. They don't need to know. It's none of their business. And I don't want them thinking like I'm feeding lies to their boyfriend to get them to feel bad for me. So I just, I don't even want to deal with crazy shit like that. So, um, that's kind of a problem. Um, and when I left the country, I was told a lot. I I wasn't telling people. I don't I don't really announce it. I mean, I know I'm on YouTube, but a lot of the people I know still don't know. I've been slowly telling everybody. Um, a lot of times, people say you're just not living enough. You know, like you're getting too much sleep, or you know, just like stupid shit like that. Like why don't you live a little and drink more and, you know, you just, you need to eat all, you know, you're not eating certain foods, like, just like crazy shit, I mean, like, people have no idea what this is like, they have no idea, they just, like, tell you crazy shit, like, shit that they, that sounds, like, cute and, like, I don't even know, but, um, yeah, like, people coming out of the woodworks with, like, really weird advice, it's, like, 
I can't believe you're telling me that. Um, I remember one time I was in the psych ward because, you know, they kept telling me it was depression. So they ended, they put me in some psych ward. I was like talking to the kids there and I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I'm just like really tired all the time. They're like, it's depression. It's depression. And this one kid was like, I got the cure for you. It's ecstasy. I was like, are you fucking kidding me right now? Like I'm in a psych ward and this is what, this is what you guys have come up with. Like, anyway, um, yeah, so like you'll hear the weirdest things and it takes everything you can to not like strangle these people to be like, are you fucking kidding me? But, um, you know, that's not cool. <laughs> a lot of people just don't know. Uh, so anyway, um, yeah, I was told to, you know, you need to live more and drink and enjoy life and this and that. And, uh, for me, the maximum amount of living I can do is on a strict regimen. So, and I'm sure it's the same way for you guys. Like, certain things you don't eat, certain amount of sleep you get, um, certain amount of movement, you don't go above a certain amount of exercise, you know, just movement of the body. Just, it, it's highly regulated, but for some reason, if that's the, you know, that's the maximum amount of energy you can get without roller coastering into, like, depression for being so tired or just other things, like, just not being able to socialize, just anything like that, it's, uh, it's the way it has to be, and uh, to live a little would mean to live less for us. So that that kind of it's not that I lost friends over that, but a, a lot of them. I mean, I guess I don't. It's really hard for me to be friends with somebody that constantly tells me that I need to live a little and that I'm not doing everything I can to make myself happy because that kind of pisses me off and it kind of shows me that they don't know anything about me because trust me I've done my research I've done all of this shit and I pretty much have maximized everything I can to feel the best I can so not cool not cool um uh yeah, a little, little, you know, they think that you're boring, um, and some friends are very skeptical, especially if you've come out of the woodworks and told them, if they have never actually sat down with you, or if you're like me and you just faked it for like 15 years, um, very skeptical, and when you tell them, you can see the look in their eye, and they ask you these questions questions about your illness, you know, and you can just tell that they think you're a hypochondriac, and they're really just trying to catch you in a lie, you know, like, to slip up, well, you know, if your memory was so bad, how did you do this, and, like, and just, like, questions like that, um, to some extent, of course, they're going to be skeptic, because they just don't know, they're just curious, they just have, you know, tell me more, but, um, to another extent, it's kind of like you get this sinking feeling like they don't understand, and this is going to be a constant struggle about whether or not they believe me. So every time I tell them, like, I'm too tired to go out, this, this is going to be going through their head that this crazy bitch has made up another story about how she's tired, and like, it's just, it's frustrating, and it's, you know, par for the course, if that's even a saying. Um, but I do really think that some of those people could still be your best allies. You just have to hang in there. And uh, I want you to know that it's very, very normal to lose friends with something like this. Because it's an illness that you can't see. So in some ways it's good because... Um, you know, if it was an illness that you could see, people wouldn't want to be around you because they would be sad. And I'm sure a lot of people with different disabilities know exactly what I'm talking about. Like, people, you know, people in wheelchairs. Like, nobody wants to be around them because it makes them sad because they can see it constantly. But for us, we're fortunate and unfortunate all at the same time. It's just a different animal. Um, that they, people can't see the illness, but it also makes it hard for friends to understand that there is actually something going on. You don't know what it is, and the research hasn't really backed us up on this either. I mean, you know, Dr. Lerner's research, Dr. Montoya's research, 
That's the closest we've come to actual research in chronic fatigue, seeing an actual virus, being able to locate a virus near the heart is uh, incredible, incredible research. But again, everything you read about chronic fatigue is like super outdated. It's just like from the 80s. It's about, you know, how like how exercise helps and I don't know, just like stupid shit like like antidepressants, like it just like hit or miss stuff about how chronic fatigue patients are just crazy. I mean, back then, it just every illness they couldn't see, they just said the person was crazy. So I'm not. Yeah, we're not, it's not just chronic fatigue, it's like every disease that came out back then. Anyway, but, um, yeah, so be patient with your friends, but also just know that you might lose a lot of them. A lot of them don't want to hear it, they don't want to be sad, they just want to hang out, have a good time, and, uh, and that's fine, that's their prerogative, but if... If you're being real about what's going on, if you're being close and intimate with your friends, like, it sounds wrong, but you know what I mean, like, you're, you're actually close with them, emotionally, um, you know, I, there comes to a point where you have to explain why you're just a weirdo, like, you have to explain why you do everything weird, and, uh, when you cross that bridge, just know that there's a bunch of possibilities that could happen after that. And be prepared for it. But also, you'll make friends in the weirdest ways. And I've, you know, I've heard a lot of people about this. I've heard through other people from telling them about other people they know with these issues. Like, uh, even my cousin, she lives in Key West, and she was like, I have a friend like this. And if I can help one person... If the antivirals work for one person, then, you know, I feel like it's worth it. It's totally worth it to explain to the world what's going on. And so, hopefully, somebody gets helped out of this. And that's all I can say. It's it's worth it. it you don't want to live in constant denial about it. Like I did for so long. It was like... I just never told a soul. I didn't tell anybody. I mean, my mom knew because she was there when I first got sick, but I never, like, told anybody before that. But now it's it's so different now because the research is different, and it's just, you know, I feel like we as a community can come out of the closet now, so to speak. You know, we don't have to, to sit around and, and get bullied by doctors and told that it's depression and that we're faking it and that all this other bullshit that's just not true. So, you know, I encourage everyone to to come out and tell people, like, what's going on and that this is a real thing. And you would be surprised how many other people you can connect with, how many different kinds of friends you can make for this. And even I had one guy friend with a girlfriend, and she did not trust me at all. And one day I told her, I was like, listen, like, <laughs> I want to hang out, but I can't right now. And I told her, you know, what was going on with me. And she just opened right up. She was like, it was like, it clicked in her head, like, why I was so weird. Like, you know, why I was so mysterious. So it's just, it like opened, it opens doors and it closes other doors. But it's, it's all part of the journey. And that's all I have to say about that. But yeah, you guys totally come out of the closet. Just be clean with people. Just come out and, and tell them and, you know, lose who you might lose and gain who you might gain. And see how it goes.